right, how's it going? So, if you're new to the channel, I'm Aaron Hallett. I write original Christian rock. I just come up with song ideas, usually on my guitar first. I just come up with a couple things, and I just start putting a song together. It's a lot of improvisation, so I don't really know what I'm going to do until it happens. I came out this morning, grabbed my guitar, came up with a couple ideas, which usually that's what happens. I've got this kind of like chromatic run that I'm going to do for a verse. Um, I'm gonna go into, I guess it'd be called a pre-chorus part. Do that, and then I'm gonna go into a chorus part, which will be... This is gonna be kind of classic rock vibe almost. Should be cool. So I'll do a left and a right guitar. You're gonna hear a drum loop that's just there to keep time until I actually play the drums. I just like it better than the metronome. So yeah, here I go. Left and right guitar now. I did a left and right guitar. I just kind of stuck to a verse, pre-chorus, chorus, repeat that three times type song structure. I uh, doubled up the last chorus though, and then did like one repetition of that verse riff like as an outro. So yeah, that's what happened. I'm going to improvise guitar solo over the third verse. So here that goes. <laughs> Bass guitar coming up right now. I improvise this as well, and I just follow the chord progression and throw a couple scale notes in. Okay, I finished the bass part up. I wiped out that drum loop that I was using. I have the metronome really loud. So that's gonna be blasting in my ears through my headphones. I just lay along to it. The drums are done and I was just warming up my voice a bit. So I've got a scratch track here that's blacked out and muted, but it's there for reference in case I forget my melody. So I have the lyrics here and I'm just gonna go for it. So let's see what happens. I think that came out pretty cool. I was like running out of air on the end of the second chorus, but uh, I stayed on pitch, so it works. It actually might work for the song. I don't usually say what my songs are about particularly. This one I was just kind of thinking about, kind of like more narcissistic people and how they're like draining themselves <laughs> and, you know, whatnot. But nothing too particular, but just sort of about that. So anyway, the lyrics are going to be in the description box. If you want to see those, you can check them out. Up above the lyrics, you're going to see where you can purchase and stream my music. And it's a bunch of online retailers. It's iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, YouTube Music, Google Play, and many more. If you use one of the ones in the list, type my name in their search bar. You should find me. And it's the same as the YouTube channel name. That is, the name is the same as the YouTube channel. Up above that is PastorMelissaScott.com. That is the best Bible teaching I know of. And I said this is Christian Rock, so I put that link there. If you go to it and check it out, it's a whole lot of teaching. 
and just teaching. That's the cool thing. It's not a lot of denominational nonsense, traditions, and a whole bunch of baggage that other places are just going to bring in. Pastor Melissa Scott focus is purely just what does the Bible actually say. There's a lot of trouble taken to like looking at translations from the original languages, which actually happens by her. So she knows the original languages, can read and write them, and can go through all of the grammar and whatnot. And it's really cool because there's a lot lost when you go from Hebrew to English. You lose a lot of idioms and various things. And Hebrew is a bit of a fake language, but there's still some loss there. And then the New Testament Greek, it's like the opposite. It's super precise. So the language is really exact. And the grammar is also super precise. So it like leaves you just like going, oh, I got exactly what this is saying. Whereas when you read it in English, you're like, huh? <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot there. And then to make it worse, almost every English translation has errors. It's almost impossible because you got to figure the translators are having a pretty tough time sometimes just because what do I actually say in my language to make this clear? So it's just, you know, difficult, but some things are just blatant errors. And I don't even know what they're doing, but you know, that's another story. It's really cool. They go into historical context and settings. And the whole point is text in context because a lot of other places do text out of context. Almost every other place does. Text out of context is error. So you just can't go by that. But anyway, there's a lot of teaching on faith. There's a lot of teaching on stewardship, and giving, and that sort of thing. And faith is the only way you can please God. They describe exactly what faith is because, believe it or not, a lot of people don't know. They'll just take it as simple belief. It's not simple belief. The word in the New Testament Greek is very precise again. So it's action based upon belief sustained by confidence. And you're basically actively faithing. You're the one doing it. And there's a whole thing in New Testament Greek where, you know, when you go into the grammar, there's things like middle voice, passive voice, etc. So it indicates that you're the one actively faithing in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And by doing that, you're actively grabbing onto the promises of God, holding on to them, saying amen to God Yes, this is absolutely true. And you just keep going in that faith daily, continually. Just the grammar alone rules out a lot of different things denominations have set up just based on what they're reading in English. So there's other things like the stewardship and giving, which a lot of churches booger up. And some of it has to do with translation. Some of it has to do with traditions and just all kinds of stuff. But um, they are the only place I know of that mentions something like, say, the woman with the alabaster box, who she gave her precious ointment to Jesus, and the disciples were all saying, why this waste? We could have given it to charity, which Judas was actually the one saying that. He was the one having the money bag, and he basically wanted to skim some off the top for himself, is essentially what it was. A lot of churches do it the Judas way, but Jesus was saying, she's done a good thing because she's giving the best she has as response to hearing the gospel, understanding that God is the provider of all things. We're just stewards here taking care of it for a time. God actually owns everything everything. And then if you look at, say, Paul writing to the Galatians and Galatians 6, 6 into 6, 7, he's talking about giving as, you know, part of that stewardship. So it's a whole thing. And a lot of different churches are doing all kinds of things that are just weird and they're trying to raise money for all kinds of nonsense, but that's not the way it should be done. Churches shouldn't be selling you anything. They shouldn't be doing, doing anything like that. They should just be teaching and if you hear that teaching and you value it, you pay for the teaching, which is not too much different than going to a restaurant, ordering food. If they give you food and you eat it and you liked it, you pay. <laughs> so <laughs> that's it. You know, the restaurant doesn't have to say, hey, we're doing all this stuff in the community. So you, like, no, you're paying for the food. So here you're paying for the teaching. That's the idea. Anyway, though, go to the website. They're not trying to sell you anything. They don't want you to pay anything if you don't learn anything. If you go there, you're just going to see study notes translation and a whole bunch of teaching on all kinds of different biblical principles. So check it out. Highly recommended by me anyway. <laughs> Song's coming up now. If you want to keep seeing my stuff, subscribe, like, comment, share, and I'll keep making music. So till the next one, later. Say